I'm Goldie Hyder of the Business Council of Canada. Welcome to Speaking of Business. This is a challenging time for Canadians. The COVID-19 pandemic has resulted in millions of job losses and businesses going under. The country is starting to take the first cautious steps towards reopening the economy, but we know it's going to be a long journey. So how do we build a stronger, healthier economy while also caring for those most affected by the shutdown? Charles Brindamore is the CEO of Intact Financial Corporation, Canada's largest property and casualty insurer. What is he seeing and what is his prescription for a robust recovery? Let's find out. Welcome to the podcast, Charles. Thanks, Goldie. Well, talking to the CEO of an insurance company, let's start with risk. Did you ever see this one coming? Well, you know, I think pandemic or preparation for pandemic is certainly part of some of the things that we think about in terms of preparing our own operations, but one that is uh, global in nature and that is impacting uh, pretty much everyone on the planet and most, if not all businesses, certainly far more pervasive than uh, anything we would have prepared for. That being said, you know, Goldie, 99% of our people are at home, 16,000 people. Service is strong and uh, we can continue to help Canadians in good and in bad times. So to a certain extent, you know, we had a number of tools in our toolbox to be prepared for this and uh, help Canadians in good and bad and in very bad times. Well, that's good to know. I mean, I, I guess um, in 99% is a fantastic achievement on your part. But as you know, there are many businesses, many of whom are customers uh, of yours or partners of yours that are going through a really challenging time. Tell us what you're seeing, you know, in terms of um, business, but also what, what you're learning about people and their resiliency at a time like this. So clearly, Goldie, we protect one in five Canadian families, one in four small to mid-sized businesses, and uh, present in the SME space across North America. So we have a good lens on what uh, people are going through, and it's hard, very hard. Uh, our, I have to applaud our government for you know, moving very quickly to help individuals across North America and in Canada in particular. But I'll tell you, the SME space is, in my mind, the one that is most impacted in Canada. And put yourself in the shoes of an entrepreneur who does not have clarity as to what the next month, the next years will be. It's hard. And they have to make decisions daily to stay alive. And so what we're seeing in the area we're focused on is really helping entrepreneurs stay afloat, keep running their businesses when they can, and coaching them to reopen. You mentioned uh, the role of governments, and I agree with you. I think much must be said for those of us who understand how governments move, just how quickly they did move, and to get relief and put a floor underneath this thing so that we can have a foundation to build on. So what have you been doing when you're engaging with government? What can government and business do together now as we head into this restart and recovery phase? Well, Goldie, let me first maybe touch upon what we've done for customers, because this very much informed how we were able to advise governments on reopening. You know, we've helped so far 800,000 Canadians with about $245 million of really either financing or premium reduction and uh, allocated about 700 of our employees. because We've kept all the jobs at Intact to help people and businesses keep on track. We've also double whammy, as you know, in Alberta with the oil and gas sectors to introduce a number of relief measures in that province specifically as well to deal with the fact that uh, it's really hard in the energy sector. And uh, not only did it make a big difference for people, but we have a very good lens of who needs relief and who's used relief. And we spent a fair bit of time with governments on that very point, uh, Goldie, just to make sure that as we think about the next steps here, who needs more help and where should we reopen, we were able to provide uh, governments with a picture. When it comes to the discussions we've had with government and the input we've been giving, we've helped them on uh, economic observations and put on relief, as I've mentioned. We've offered field support for tracing as well as data management. They have yet to take us up on the offer. And we've also uh, worked with governments to talk about reopening strategy because as we map our customer base, our view is that 80 plus percent of SMEs can work in a fairly safe environment to limit 
transmission. Our message to government really, speed is good. So clearly that was one of the strengths of the response, but risk management needs to be embedded in the steps we take. And what is risk management? Well, risk management is preparedness. First, we've got to be prepared for a second wave, whether it's regional, whether it's provincial, whether it's national in nature, we need to learn from what we've done in the first wave to prepare for the second wave. And our second area of focus with government Goldie is to say the efforts need to be based on risk. In other words, we need to take a more robust step to product our vulnerables. We need to leverage all the no downside measures that we can. But then as we look at curtailing transmission, on the industrial base or the economic base, we need to be far more surgical in shutting down parts of the economy and speed up the reopening. Uh, and that's very much about leadership, Goldie. Our leaders uh, need to continue and step up the efforts to inspire confidence because people make decisions on the basis of trust and confidence. And I think that uh, government have played a role there, but we need some more inspiration when it comes to confidence going forward. Yeah, I think those things add up to hope, don't they? They do. They do. Absolutely. Now, of course, in your business, you interact with both federal government as well as provincial governments. What are you seeing? How is Canada working? Well, I think the provinces seem to be working well together. And I think, you know, the provinces very much recognize that, yes, it's very important to protect the vulnerable, but there's a socioeconomic cost that's very significant. The Fed understands that as well. But I would say informal relationships between the provinces seem to be good. That being said, I think that the uh, federal government, who's also moving fast and and doing a good job, we need to ensure there's a greater degree of coordination between the federal and the provinces, uh, because coordination you know, when, when businesses are thinking about the future and are thinking about reopening, ideally, there's some consistency, which, of course, takes risk in mind. But I think between the Fed and the, uh, the provinces, you know, a bit more cooperation would be, uh, would be helpful. But I think the country is working through this in a very constructive fashion. Uh, the dialogue is open. People are accessible and uh, very constructive. That's good. Good to hear. Uh, You know, there's always room for improvement. I think the coordination consistency is certainly the point I hear the most. But overall, we're lucky, certainly, uh, with where we find ourselves. Now, not everybody is lucky, of course. There's a lot of people out there uh, who have, beyond businesses, have been taking a personal uh, toll that the situation has. What is Intact doing uh, in its ongoing sort of CSR community support programs to help people navigate this crisis? So, Goldie, I think that, you know, helping society for us is not CSR. Helping people, businesses, and society is our mission. And so the first step is what I've talked about earlier. It's to date 800,000 Canadians, 245 million of relief. And this is by far the biggest area of uh, help that we're providing. The second thing is that life goes on, natural disasters goes on, and our operations are up and running ready to step up, as we've shown in Fort Mac last month, to help Canadians. On the community impact front, we've allocated and given about $3.5 million to two key areas. First, helping those in greater needs, in particular on food support, and in particular with an organization called Meals on Wheels, our own people called our customers that were deemed vulnerable to ask how they were doing from a food point of view and whether we could provide help. So that's an example. But we've supported a number of programs across the country on that front and across North America. And we just were in the process of finalizing a uh, support program with the uh, hospital network around the uh, plasma treatment to help fight COVID-19. And so we've been helping on a number of fronts, but food security has been a big area of focus for us. Well, thanks for for that. I mean, obviously, you know, at a time like this, everyone who needs the help is grateful for it. A lot of that going on across the country. Of course, we can't uh, continue uh, in terms of what we're seeing. We know that we're going to have to coexist with COVID for a period of time. How do you see 
things evolving in terms of both the restart and ultimately the recovery? Where are the opportunities here? I think, Goldie, when I, I've shared my perspective on restart, which is one that is risk-based. In other words, be more bold and aggressive in, in uh, protecting the vulnerables and enforcing measures that will reduce transmission. But we need to be far more surgical and risk-based in reopening the economy and ensuring we don't shut down the economy down the road in a uh, broad brush fashion. I think that is key. The bigger question for me is how do we come out of this stronger as a nation? And I would say that when you look at crises of that nature, when you look at natural disasters, which obviously this is not a natural disaster, but you know, from a, an economic shutdown point of view, it certainly mirrors that. What is clear to us is that it's not like there's a ton of new trends emerging out of crisis, but the trends that were in place before the crisis tend to accelerate. And therefore, you know, our perspective is that uh, Canadians will want more for their money. Savings rate is likely to go up. Canadians will want more for their money. Digital engagement will become increasingly important. And as businesses, we need to make sure that we meet and exceed those expectations going forward. If we look at the business side of things, when we look at the SMEs, we will lose a number of, of SMEs in this crisis, and that'll, that'll take a long time to uh, recover. And so supporting small businesses, but we will see, we think, a polarization between small and mid-sized businesses where the mid-sized businesses will become greater. And in my mind, turning our attention to uh, winning with small and supporting consolidation of mid-sized businesses will be really important. And I think in all of this, uh, Goldie, businesses like ours, big businesses who have played an important part in the development of the country need to step up our game to find solutions to society's problems, which will be exacerbated as a result of this. Income disparity, skill gap, big businesses need to step up to address a number of these issues where they can and need to step up as well to support funding for smaller businesses and emerging industries here in Canada. And I would say the thing we need to do a better job of as a nation, and I, I believe everybody now gets it, is that prosperity requires economic resilience. And economic resilience requires risk management that is being prepared and thoughtful about you know, where we take risk as a nation. That's very well said. Uh, I think, uh, you know, you know, the hashtag these days is in this together. And I think a lot of people think about it as in the crisis together. But the fact is, we need to be in it together, coming out of it, as you've noted, and a real opportunity for business to lead and work with others to build back better, as we like to say here. So thank you for that. Um, Let me just ask if I can, as a final question, part of this podcast is to help leaders learn about being, uh, you know, being a leader and about what leadership is. Crises, of course, present their own challenges. And I'm wondering if you can share with the listener, what have you learned about yourself as a leader? What are some of the lessons that you would think you want to share with leaders who may have to manage their own crises down the road? Well, Goldie, we've, um, one of the blessings I had myself uh, as a leader was that I've been through a number of crises. We've created intact in its current form in a wait, uh, right in the middle of a, a massive crisis. My first leadership experience was in Eastern Europe in years where the inflation was above 100%. And uh, I've learned tremendously from those experiences. This helped here in COVID, but one indeed as to make sure that you don't miss the opportunity to learn from those historical moments. And I would say, you know, one key point that comes out of this is you see your top talent step up like there's no tomorrow. And the lesson there for me as leaders and as Canadian leaders is that we need to take risk on top talent. In other words, promote our top talents faster and expose them to a a much greater extent. And the response is phenomenal. And you see it very clearly in crisis. I'd say that the behaviors that um, are really important and what I've been working with our 2,000 leaders at Intact uh, over the past three months is a number of behaviors that are key. One, being calm. 
you know, people look at you, there's a lot of anxiety, it's unsettling, you ought to be calm. Two, it's very important to be fact-based and objective. We're getting all sorts of information from various sources. There's a lot of emphasis on the bad scenarios, but the context is kind of lost and, and people are exposed to the bad things and the objectivity is sort of out of what people are exposed to as leaders. People look up to you. You ought to be objective and fact-based. The third thing is it's very important to be present, to be out there, to communicate so that people feel like you've got their back and you're looking ahead. And the last thing I'll say is that being optimistic and hopeful is so critical. Like we will be out of this in relative terms. We're in good shape as a nation and uh, this will pass. And therefore, as leaders, in my mind, it's very important to give a sense of hope as well, because people look up to us. And I would say I looked at the leaders that, in fact, the 2000 people I was talking about, and uh, they've done a phenomenal job displaying those behaviors in the last three months. And I think we'll come out of this stronger. I can't think of a more hopeful, factual, optimistic place to conclude than to calmly say, this too shall pass. And thank you, Charles, for helping shed some light on what you're doing to make it so. Goldie, thank you very much. It was my pleasure to uh, be your guest, and I'll wish you uh, good luck. Stay safe. Good luck to all. Charles Brindamore is the CEO of Intact Financial Corporation. If you would like to hear more of our Speaking of Business conversations, about the COVID-19 crisis, you can find them all wherever you get your podcasts or simply go to our website, speakingofbiz.ca. That's biz with a Z. Until next time, I'm Goldie Hyder. Thank you for joining us. Stay safe.